What's up everybody? I hope you're doing well. So I never cease to be amazed at just how bad of a track record counseling clinics, agencies, hospitals, etc. have for caring for their employees given that our entire field is built on supporting people's mental health. <laughs> Yet here we are. Because I know so many folks who watch my videos on this channel are stuck in unhealthy work environments, maybe daydreaming about exiting that work environment someday, I thought it might be helpful to make this video just sort of listing out some common characteristics of unhealthy work environments because I've been there before and I know when you're stuck in that unhealthy environment, it can start to feel so normal that we don't even realize how bad it is. So I'm here to tell you, yeah, this is, if, if your work environment is exhibiting these traits, it's bad. It's not healthy. Let's do some, let's just call it, let's call it what it is. Call a spade a spade. Is that the phrase? I don't know. But I digress. So stay tuned in this video. I'm gonna name some signs that you're in an unhealthy work environment. Welcome to Private Practice Skills. I'm Dr. Marie Fang, psychologist in private practice. I post videos offering tools I learned the hard way about starting and growing private practice so that you don't have to. Now, of course, there are way more signs of an unhealthy work environment than I could possibly cover in a single video, but unfortunately, I've experienced some unhealthy work environments myself. So what I've done is I've just named some of the characteristics that I saw repeat in those unhealthy work environments and listed them for you here. And chances are, if you're in an unhealthy work environment, at least some of these characteristics will be embodied even if the list is much longer than what I cover here. So let's hop into some characteristics of an unhealthy work environment. Characteristic number one, little to no oversight. As I reflect back on all the different places I've worked, of the places that I felt were unhealthy, this seemed to be the most common characteristic across all of them. That even if I was completely surrounded by other people, I just didn't have enough support, whether it was from consultation, from my boss, supervisors, you name it, I just didn't feel supported enough that I couldn't get the help I needed when I needed it. And from my perspective, one of the greatest advantages to working for an employer other than yourself, like I do, is that you have built in support. So if you're finding that it's not easy to access consultation, trainings, or whatever kind of support you might be in need of, that's just a really unfortunate sign and definitely a sign of an unhealthy workplace. Sign number two that you might be in an unhealthy work environment is emphasis on productivity over quality of care. Ugh, don't, don't even get me started on this because I can get so amped up, it upsets me deeply. I posted a reel about this on Instagram pretty recently and just reading through your comments got me so fired up because it was even worse than I thought. If your boss or supervisor is double booking sessions or expecting you to see clients on your lunch break in order to recoup no-shows from earlier in the week or expecting you to be available in off hours, uh, that's a sign of an unhealthy work environment. And keep in mind, seeing more clients does not equal more help to society because you're human too. And so if you're seeing too many clients or expected to work more than is reasonable or than what you're being compensated for, then the quality of your work goes downhill, you burn out, need I go over all of this? It's not healthy for you as a therapist and therefore it's less helpful to your clients. Quantity is not better than quality. So if that's the expectation at your workplace, it's a sign of an unhealthy work environment. Also, it's worth noting as an aside here that your direct manager or boss might be a very kind soul who wants what's best for you, but they're operating within the broader system, maybe a county system that requires a certain level of productivity. But even if your immediate boss is a kind person, you still might be working within the greater unhealthy system that just expects too much from its therapist. Sign number three that you're in an unhealthy work environment is otherizing the population that you serve. I am beyond appalled by how much disgust therapists often feel towards the clients that they work with. And there's this mentality often in our field that somehow us as therapists have it figured out or are better than in some way than the clients that we serve. And not only is this inaccurate, it's also incredibly dangerous to have this perspective in any work environment. And especially when we're meant to be a safe space in relationship with those that we serve. And I'm not going to get into all the details of why this is so dangerous, but the us versus them mentality is highlighted in the Stanford prison experiment. So I'll just cite that moment that we know we all learned about in grad school of what not to do. 
That is exactly what happens in our workplaces when we have that us versus them mentality with our clients. We are equals with our clients. We are walking alongside our clients. We are no different nor better than the clients that we serve. So if you're noticing that uh, the clients are being otherized, you are effectively in a system that's marginalizing the people that you're supposed to be helping. <sighs> and rant. Okay, let's keep going. And sign number four of an unhealthy work environment is poor boundaries. If you're expected to be available to receive calls during off hours or to work through your lunch break, then this is a sign of an unhealthy work environment. You deserve to have a legitimate lunch break and also breaks throughout your day just like everybody else because you are a human being who deserves to be treated as such. I remember one time I was in a two hour group supervision meeting and I had to get up to use the restroom partway through and I was publicly chastised in front of my peers for not being able to sit for two hours for a meeting when I, I needed to pee. And in the moment I thought, oh, I guess I'm supposed to be able to sit for two hours without peeing. But in retrospect, how terrible is that that I couldn't get up in a two hour meeting to go to the bathroom? So if you're experiencing that in your workplace, it's a sign of an unhealthy work environment. Now, these are all the signs of an unhealthy work environment that I'm naming in this video. There are things that I've experienced in unhealthy environments in the past. And the reason why it's such a short list is because even if there's a much longer list of signs of an unhealthy work environment based on what you can tell, chances are high that some or all of these items are included. So if you're experiencing these items in your work environment, it's you're in an unhealthy work environment. And keep in mind that this can apply to any workplace context, which you know generally for this video I'm talking about like when you're working for somebody else, but this also applies when you're in a solo practice working for yourself like me. In this case, you are both employer and employee. And keep in mind that you also need to take care of yourself as your own employee in the same way that you would expect to be well cared for if you were working for somebody else. And whether you work for yourself or somebody else, I encourage you to take an inventory to just assess the health of your work environment. And if you're noticing signs of unhealth, as I've gone over in this video, then you might consider advocating for your needs if needed, setting boundaries or going part time if that's helpful to you or changing careers or shifting to a different job altogether. Whatever route you choose, I just want to make clear that the items I named in this list are not healthy. I don't want you to feel like, well, it's the nature of being in the field. I don't have a choice. This is what it looks like to be a therapist because that's absolutely not true. <laughs> so if you choose to stay in the environment that you're in, just know that it is an unhealthy dynamic. It's not to be expected or the way that it's supposed to be. And before we close, I'd like to thank therapynotes.com for sponsoring this video. Therapy Notes helps with scheduling, notes, and billing, and they have a HIPAA secure telehealth platform, which is wonderful. So if you'd like to check out Therapy Notes, you can get two months to try it for free with no commitment just by clicking the link in the description of this video. Well, I hope you found this video helpful regardless of what kind of setting you're working in at this time or maybe you're daydreaming about working as a therapist someday in the future. And feel free to add to the list in the comments below because I know you all support each other so well in the comments section. Thank you for that. And until next time, from one therapist to another, I wish you well. I post videos offering tools. I learned the tools, tools.